I want to make the interference pattern due to double slits. And, you know, in the classic book version, the textbook version, they say, okay, well, you have a light source right here. You have a light source right there. They're in phase. This path is longer than that one by this amount delta. You can find that. Let's call this um, distance S, I guess the distance between the slits and the angle that it will be the angle theta. So delta equals S sine theta. And then you can say, well, if, if delta is equal to M times lambda, some, uh, you know, inter, uh, integer number of wavelengths more than you have constructive interference. And that's where they focus on these constructive interference points. But what about all the points in between? What about the, the rest of the, the picture? Well, it's not as easy as you would think. First of all, uh, if I'm not at a maximum, then I can represent the electric field component of the wave uh, with this one-dimensional wave equation, right? So it's not the wave equation, it's a solution. That's the maximum electric field. Omega is the angular frequency of the wave, and K is the wave number. And that depends on the wavelength. But if these two are in phase, they're going to have the same omega t, but they'll have different, uh, they'll be at different positions right here. So we could say, suppose we have E1 and E2, and we want to find uh, the representation of the electric field there. Of course, it's going to oscillate up and down, but we really just want the resultant uh, kind of maximum electric field E0, uh, which is weird because they're out of phase. Well, let's write E1 like this. E1 is going to be equal to sine omega t, right? It has, it, I, I, I've, I subtracted off that whole piece, so I'm just saying that's at x equals 0 if you want to think of it that way. Then E2 would be a little bit different. It would be sine omega t, the same frequency and same time, plus some phase shift phi. The phase shift uh, phi will be equal to k times delta, where delta is the difference in distance. And k is the wave number. k is 2 pi over lambda. Now, how do I add these two things? Well, I could definitely just add them. But one way to add these is to say, OK, suppose that I, this is the idea of phasers. Imagine that I have an electric field like this. This is E1, and this is omega t. Then this would be omega t sine omega t e0 sine omega t. So you can imagine the y component of this vector as this vector rotates around. And then e2 would be a vector like this. It's a little bit different because it's, it's the same thing but has this phase shift phi right there. And if I add these two as vectors, I can take the projection over here. So really what I want to do, and I can add any number of vectors this way. I can start with my first vector right there, and then another vector, another vector, another vector, another vector. It doesn't have to go in the same line, and then project it over into the y-axis, and I can find the resultant E0 sine omega t, and then I can just take that E0 part, and that's the intensity. Well, actually, the intensity of light, I, is proportional to, proportional to the E0 squared. We just... Uh, that's how we our eyes detect it as the proportional to the intensity squared, the electric field squared. Now there's something else that's very important here. And if you want to get a realistic double slit pattern, we have to use Huygens principle, and I probably said that wrong and I'm fine with that. I like to make mistakes on purpose. How do you take into account that the slit has each slit has some width? Well, when light passes through this, we can represent this as uh, a bunch of new point sources. So both of these are a bunch of point sources. So if I want to find the intensity right here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that I have to add up. And I'd probably want even more than that. So if I can create a way to make these points, that's easy, find a way to add up the intensities using... Uh, I'm going to use phasers. I'm going to I'm going to represent. I'm going to. So here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to have some default distance. I need to calculate the path distance for each of these. With that, get a phasor electric field vector. And then I can add up all the, the electric field vectors and take the y component and that will square it, and that's my intensity. And then I can move to another point, another point, another blah, 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 and that's what we're going to do. Now, I'm actually going to draw these as, I'm not going to make a graph. I could, and I probably will. But I'm going to draw these as spots. Um, it'll be kind of fun. We're going to do it in 3D. Um, using WebV Python. Okay, let's just jump right into it and make this program. I kind of already started it. Uh, spoiler alert, here's what I have. I put down some values uh, for things that we're going to use. So this is WebV Python, if you haven't been familiar with that. Uh, it allows me to draw three-dimensional objects, and those objects are going to be spots. So every spot on the screen is going to be a, a, a little circle, a cylinder. So the first thing I need to do, that, let me tell you what I have right here. Spot size, and I'll put a comment. How big is each spot, right? Because I'm not drawing a continuous uh, distribution. I'm just doing it at certain points. So each of those points, I'm going to display them and calculate the intensity and display the intensity as the, uh, the opacity of that circle. So if the intensity is low, it's going to be very see-through which is like a not very bright spot. And if it's maximum, it'll be some maximum amount. Uh, LZ is, I'm gonna have my screen in the Z direction, right? So actually, uh, I'm gonna put the screen at, y, at Z equals zero, and then the points will be back here in the Z direction. But that's just how far away it is. So it's one meter, you can change that if you want to, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is my wavelength lambda. You can't use actually lambda, because I think that's a reserved word. Uh, and I just picked up something that seemed like a reasonable uh, visible light. I think that's visible light. Uh, K is my wave number, 2 pi over lambda. I need that. D is the, and I, I got a little mixed up with my, with my terms here, but I'm using D for the, the width of the slit, and DD is the distance between the slits. So my slit is a lot smaller than my distance between slits. And we can change this up. We definitely don't want to use it just as a number. And then E0 is my electric field. Um, okay, so the first step is to put point sources where those slits are. Uh, I'm going to call, I'm going to have all these points as just vector locations in a list so that I can go through and, and traverse the list and calculate my intensity and all that stuff. So let's um, just make a list of points, and I'm going to call it PTS. It's an empty list. See, that wasn't so hard. Um, let's see, what else do I need? Let's just make a function to determine, to place the points in one list. I mean, for one slit. Um, so I'm going to make a function. And, and I'm very uh, sloppy with my functions, and I apologize, but that just, that's just the way I am. Uh, let's just make this function, def slits. And I want to give it the center of the slit, the width of the slit, and the number of points. So I'm going to call this xt, because my slits are going to be in the x direction, wt for the width, and then nt for the number. And I always add t to those so that I'm talking about a temporary variable that I use in this in this function, just so I don't confuse it with other things later. Um, OK, so if, if I want to have my list, my points, at a center xt uh, with a number nt, I need to find out the, the spacing between my points. So I can do that dxt is my temporary uh, x step size. It's just going to be the total width of the slit, wt, divided by the number of points, nt. Right? That should work. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work. I'm going to add points to a temporary list and then take that list and add it to the total. So let's make up a temporary list. This is what we're going to return from our function. And now I need to know where is my, my point going to start. Let's call that x temp. It will just be, uh, no, I'll call it x start. And where am I going to start? I'm going to start not at xt, that's the center. I want to start at xt minus half the width, wt over 2. Right. So I'm going to start, if that's my value, I'm going to move over halfway. Um, 
And now I need a variable. That's just where I'm starting. Let's make a variable for x. Uh, for for I'm going to move my x values along. So let's just call it x temp. It's x start. There. So now I have that. And now I can say while x temp is less, I'm going to keep moving it until it gets to the other side of the slit. And that would be uh, xt plus wt over 2. So I'm going to keep moving it until that's true. Now all I have to do is add my points to the list and then move my point. So temp equals temp plus the vector uh, x temp and then uh, 0 lz, right? Because I want it back a distance from the screen. I want my screen at z equals 0. So I'm going to move it back in the positive z direction. Now I need to move my point x temp equals x temp plus dxt. And then I want to return that list, return temp. Let's try this out. Let's say I want my, um, here's my first distance between the slits is going to be dd. So my, my location is going to be dd over 2 in the x direction. And then my width will be d. And let's do four points. So print, I'm just going to print it. Print slits dd over 2 d is that what i called it i already forgot d yep four let's see if it works i didn't even save this yet so that's kind of dumb of me but i'm gonna just run it anyway run and i had an error okay great less than is not a function oh i think i did while x temp is less than xt okay this should be this maybe oh i did put that xt colon what a run it x temp is not a function in x temp less than xt oh, i don't have x temp maybe oh did i misspell it x temp x temp what did i do wrong temp x start Here, I, I made this function before. I'm just going to copy my old function. See if it's any different. There. Okay, it worked. I don't even know what I did. Sometimes you just, you just can't see. When you're in the moment, you can't see. I could use my rubber duck method of debugging and figure out what was going on, but I didn't want to do that. But there's my four points. It looks good. I think we're okay. Um, okay, let's just go ahead and, and, and do four points in both slits. So I'm going to make both the slits and I want to add those to my total points. So I can say this points equals points plus that slits. And remember slits is another list so it should be fine. And then I'm going to do it for points equals points plus uh, let's call this n. I'm going to call this n n for the number of points. And let's go up here and say uh, n, n equals 4. I'm keeping it to a small number so that we can handle it. Um, oh, my thing's off right here. You can still see, though, right? Yeah. That's weird. Let's see. Okay. Uh, 4. So points plus slits, that's going to be the one in the positive direction. And then I have negative dd over 2, d, n, n for the negative direction. And let's print our points just to make sure it's working. And I still haven't saved this dumb thing. Let's save it. Um, double slit visual. and run it. 
So uh, there's my points. I don't really want to see those, but I want to see that they're actually working. It seems okay. Um, that's cool. Now I can um, create another function that takes a point and an observation location and calculates or takes all the points and calculates the total intensity at that point. Now, in order to do that, that's fine. Let's, let's do that. Um, I, I need to calculate a path link difference for each of these points, and I, I don't know where I'm going, so I'm just gonna have a default path link difference that I can subtract the actual path link from, uh, and I'm gonna call that S0. So uh, S0 is just the, the distance from the center of the slits to the screen, so S0 equals LZ. I don't even need to do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, let's define another function, and it will be called I. Def I, and I'm gonna give it, I, I, I already know where my, uh, I, I want to be able to give it an observation location, use my points that I have, and return the intensity. So all I need is the observation location here. It's gonna use the points that I already have. So OBST, uh, ob OBS I use for observation location, T for temporary, and that's all I'm gonna give it, okay? And we could put something like here in the comments, this takes the points and the observation location to return intensity. Intensity there. I'm not always not great at comments, but using phasers. So if I'm going to find the electric field phaser for each point source, I need to start and add it all together, I need to start with a default vector. So I'm going to call this EPR for the, the uh, resultant phase vector and it's just zero, zero, zero. Cause I need to add them all together, So, but I have to start with something to add it to. Oops, I don't want to do that. Now I can go through all my points and just calculate what I need to do. So this is where I can use a, uh, a nice for loop for PT and PTS. This will go through all the points in PTS and call them PT, which is just a vector. And I want to find the path length, and then I want to find the phase difference. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to find the path length for that particular point. So P, I'll call it PL, path length, it's the magnitude of the observation location, OBST. I'm sorry, it'd be, well, it doesn't really matter. It's the, fi it's the final minus initial. So it should be OBST minus PT. That's my vector location, right? I'm doing a vector subtraction so I can find the vector length of that path. And then I'm gonna take the magnitude of it because I don't really care about the direction. And then I will subtract that constant as zero and that gives me my path length difference. I can find the phase shift phi is just gonna be equal to K times the path length. That path length is my delta, right? It's path length difference actually. And then I can write that as a phaser and add it to the total. Uh, EPR equals EPR plus vector cosine phi sine phi zero. And so this is in the phase space, right? So my, uh, my my angle phi, I want the, you know, I'm just drawing it like a normal vector. So my first vector is in the x-axis and then I can shift it up and my projection into the y-axis is the one that I really want. Uh, that will go through every single point and do this. And then I just re want to return the intensity of that, return uh, the magnitude of EPR. Oh wait, that's the, I want the y component. So I, let's just do this return EPR dot Y squared. I just want the Y component of that resultant vector and I'm gonna square it. Okay, let's just test. Let's pick an observation point and test this. Uh, print I vector zero, zero, zero. So right there in the center, let's just see if it gives a value. It won't really make sense, but let's just see if it gives a value. And it didn't. See, good thing we tested it, huh? Can't find the variable returner. That's weird. Can't find that variable. Hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Obviously, I just typed it wrong. Returner. 
Okay, so it, it got a value. With, that doesn't really mean anything. I picked a weird um, value for E0 and everything like that, but uh, should it be? Oh yeah, it can be higher than one E, right? Because E0 is one, but we're adding a bunch of vectors together, so that's fine. I, I do want to get uh, the maximum uh, intensity. And I think this would be it, right? Because if I'm at the center of the spot, that's my maximum intensity. And I need that to scale how I draw all these dots. So let's call that uh, IO max. So I'm just going to put right here, IO, no, O max equals. Yeah. Okay. We're ready to make our spots. So what I want to do, I can make one single spot. Let's just make one single spot right there in the middle. And then we can just uh, move our X value along and do it for multiple spots. Now let's just do it for multiple spots. Um, so how, how far do I want to go? I'm not 100% sure how big this pattern should be. So let's just pick a value. Um, I'm going to start at XS equals uh, negative, I, I'm imagining if this was an actual thing, my screen, it'd probably be about a centimeter large, um, maybe two centimeters. So let's say negative uh, is vector, no, let's say RS, I'm going to write it as a vector. R, that's the location of my, my start, vector negative 0 0.0100. Now I need uh, my step size, um, and how big will that be? Uh, D R is going to be vec. Let's say vector. Let's say it's D R S divided by a hundred. So I have a hundred points on the left, and then I have a hundred points on the right. And if it's, if it's too many, it's too many. No, I want to do this in terms of the spot size, right? I want, because I, if I want the spots to be overlapping a little bit, then I can just do this in terms of the spot size. So vector, um, let's just say spot size, zero, zero. And, and then let's see if there, if the step size is, is a, it, those would be overlapping. That's fine. Let's just try that. If it doesn't look good, we can change it. It's a computer program. We change it. Uh, now I'm going to move that RS until I get to the other side. So while uh, RS.X is less than 0 0.01, do the following. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to pick my observation location, which I actually already have. That is, that is my observation location. Uh, now I'm just going to draw a cylinder at that observation location. Let's see. I didn't like that back right there. Cylinder is my circle. And I'm not even going to give it a name. I'm just going to draw it. Its position is going to be equal to RS. Its axis, so when you draw a cylinder, it's going to be uh, a circle. You need to give it the location of one end, an axis to the other end, and a radius. Uh, so the axis in this case uh, will be in the Z direction. And we can just say vector, zero, zero. And then I'll put the, <clears throat> the width at spot size over 10. That way, if I change the size of my spot, the aspect ratio stays the same, and so that should make everyone happy. Um, I need to give it a radius spot size. And finally, I need to give it an opacity. Uh, so opacity is going to be how transparent it is. And it will be equal to I at the observation location of RS divided by I zero max. So if it's the maximum amount, yeah, then it would be one and it'd be having opacity one, it'd be as bright as it could be. If it's a low intensity, this fraction would be smaller and it would be more see-through. I think that should work. Now I just need to move my RS. RS equals RS plus DR. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that should do it. Let's run it and see. No, it did not do it. 
Too many right parentheses. Okay, I can fix that. Too many right parentheses at I O max. Yeah, there are too many there. Oh, and this is, oh yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, oh, and there's, oh, it did it. I didn't give it a color, but it worked. Look, those are just white. That's kind of weird right there. Oh, just, that is bright right, that's fine. Um, it is getting different intensities. Let's change the color, because I, I like cyan. I think cyan shows up well. Uh, put it right here. I said put, put a return. Color equals color dot cyan. And let's run it. That's pretty cool. Okay, I think I went too far, but that's fine. Um, you know, the other thing that looks weird, I guess because of the way they... This side looks different than that side, and I'm not sure why. It looks like it's all, like, stacked... Uh, in a particular way, let's let's decrease. Um, why is that? I still think it's pretty good. Let's just go ahead and increase the number of points because that's not very many points. N n equals four. Let's change n n equals to a hundred. Why not? Right. And let's maybe. I'm kind of concerned that they're all stacked one way, like right here. See, this side looks different than this side. That, see, th these two, I'm pointing at the screen. This one right here and that one right there are the same, but this one has that thing overlapping it. I wonder if it's like, hmm. It's still pretty good. I'm still pretty happy. Let's make the spot size smaller and see if that makes a difference. Um, zero, five, half as big. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think it's exactly right, because this looks a little weird right here, and that looks a little weird right there, but it definitely is doing something. Uh, and it is in 3D, that's kind of cool. Let's do this. Let's make um, my start point um, a little bit smaller, zero, one. Let's just try a millimeter, let's see what happens there. Okay, now it doesn't look even. I think I have an error in here somewhere. So I'm gonna have to work on this. But let me tell you what, um, I think that this is a good proof of concept, right? Uh, and you could also make, instead of circles, you could make like vertical boxes and that will give it more space up and down. I think that would probably look better because then you could put as many, you could just change the width of it. Um, but I wanna do spots because I want to do um, a, a circle, right? An aperture. And so if I want to do an aperture, I can do the same thing. I just put a bunch of light point sources over there. I put a bunch of point source observation locations on the screen and I can model, you know, things like just normal telescope diffraction and things like that. And that would be kind of cool. I don't think this is working perfectly, but I'm going to try, uh, the aperture thing and see if that works. And then I would definitely want to use a circle for that. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm pretty sure there's an error in here, but still, it's, it's the proof of concept for me that's important. So I'll put a link to the code down below. I'll put a link to my uh, phaser explanation for double slits, and then maybe sometime I'll do the, the aperture thing. That'd be kind of fun. So, okay, that's it.